Hello there, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another episode of Cookie Cast. Today on Cookie Cast, it's the Darkest Timeline podcast, so it's me for the day. Usual stuff will ensue, I'm sure. There'll be games, movies, TV, that's if I've done any of those things. Something from the last week, and uh, that'll probably be about it. So uh, here we go. This is Cookie Cast, the Darkest Timeline podcast. Right. Oh, there we go. There we go. Hello. It's uh, it's Cookie. Uh, yeah. Um. So uh, I I don't know I don't know if the audio will pick it up. Uh, I don't know why I've said it like that because it's not like there's any video. Um, but. At this point in time, we're, I think we're supposed to be at the back end of Storm. So it's Sakara. Um, which I, I was just under the impression was the name of Russell Wilson's wife. Uh, but apparently it's a storm. Uh, and it's been a absolute bitch of a storm. Um, you definitely find out the integrity of your house in a monster storm. Um, that's for sure. Uh, yeah, it's been, it's been awful. Um, driving in a, a storm like this is, uh, yeah, super treacherous. Um, so yeah, as is the way of things, I like to keep you updated on uh, what level of sickness I'm at uh, currently. Pff, I mean, yeah, still st- t- still sick. Um, apparently not as sick as the guy who, sit ne- who sits next to me at work. I uh, think a couple of people were planning on, uh, on a lynching earlier today. Um... So, you know, got to be thankful for that. Uh, but, yep, yeah, the uh, the sickness keeps on rolling. I'm, I'm pleased to report uh, the germs are doing their job. Um, yeah, don't know what to tell you. Do not know what to tell you. It's, uh, I'd say it was a concern, but... At this point in time, what exactly am I going to do about it? Uh, so yeah. Uh, right, let's look at the old uh, list. Hey. Hey. There is something on the list. That hasn't been on the list for a little while. I'm just going to say that now. Little tease, little uh, little something there in a certain category that hasn't been here for a little while. Yeah. Um. So, uh, I did a podcast last night. You will have heard that podcast by now. You'll probably heard it a few weeks ago. Um. But it was um, me and Luke doing an episode of the whole avocado uh, and talking about getting old, which um, it's a bit of a it's a bit it's a bit of a mixed bag. Um, one of the things about uh, it was before we did it, Luke was like, "Oh, I'm going to ask you about this." I was like, "Don't ask me about that because I'm doing that on the darkest timeline." He was like, "Ah." Oh, well, what what if I, what about if I ask you about this? Yeah, don't ask me that either. I'm doing that on the darkest timeline. All oh, right, okay. Um, what about this? I was like, let's just stay away from that entire subject, and that that will be good for me because I really don't want to have to go through it all again. And yeah. Um, but the first thing on my list is kind of a bit of both. 
So basically, Luke's like, I'll ask you about what you did at the weekend. I was like, don't do that, because that's what I talk about on the Darkest Timeline. Um, but in light of getting old, and in light of what I did at the weekend, um, I've realised, I think, it, it feels like an old man thing. Whilst also being like, this will sound weird, but like a young person thing as well. Um, you know, I'll... <coughs> you know, I'll... Uh, like an old man trait is... They get like obsessed about things. You know, you you go, you have a midlife crisis, and you start going to garden centres. Which, honestly, if there's a point in my life where I start going, oh, ooh, garden centre, then it's probably over, and uh, you should probably do the right thing if you know what I mean. Um, or I don't know. To me, a, a, a middle-aged man trait is that you get obsessed about things. Um, and you hunt for things. When I was younger, I used to hunt for comics. Um, it was the weirdest thing. I remember I'd been collecting um, DV8 comics. And I was missing one. And every city that I went to, every place that I went, I would first find a comic shop. I would go into the comic shop. I'd be like, have you got this this issue of DV8? Oh, I'm not sure. Have a look in our section. I'd, I'd you know, go through it like a, like a, some kind of sniffer dog. Like, <laughs> um, and then they would never, they would never have it. Uh, and I'd move on. And I think as a collector, that's that's a thing. You collect things, and you hunt for them, and you look out for them, and you try and get good deals, and, you know, I'm prepared to pay this for this, and, um, you know, if you're looking for rare stuff. Um, comics are, were weird things. If you didn't get them at the time, um, you'd really struggle um sometimes to find them um so i spent i mean comics are comics were released monthly um it feels like it was a couple of years i hunted for this comic and then i went somewhere I have absolutely no idea where it was. But in those days, it wasn't like I was well-travelled. So there's a high chance it was probably like Manchester or Leeds or something. Uh, and I went to a comic shop and I was like, uh, don't suppose you've got a copy of this, co this, copy of this issue of DV8. And one of the guys was like, oh, uh, yeah, actually, I think we have. And I was like, what? It was like, oh, you know, let's let's go and look. So, you know, found found the the DV8 section, went through the comics, and they did in fact have the missing issue. Um, DV8 had a fairly short run, as far as comics goes. It had like a, a series. Um, it was in the sort of twenties, um, but it had a start, a middle, and an end. All that sort of stuff. Um, <clears throat> it, had, it had been finished a while by the time I tracked down the missing issue. And they did, they did in fact have that comic. So I bought it. Um, I think, you know, because it was like I was expecting to pay more for it and I bought it at the price it was listed at. You know, comic, comics have the prices printed on them. Um, and that's the price I paid for it, and things like that. And when I had it in my possession, I was like, oh my god, I've got it. My life is now empty. Because 
as a collector, part of the part of the passion around it was the hunt, hunting for that that missing item. And then when I finally had it, and when I had a complete collection, I it was like I lost all interest. I was just like, yeah, that's that done now. I have, you know, no, you know, I go into new towns and stuff. It wasn't like I could go to the, the shop and go, oh, you know, have you got this? Because I had them on. Um, so it was kind of an anti-climax. Um, how does this relate to what I was saying? I'll tell you. Um, Saturday morning, went to... Morrison's took nearly the entire family. Um, we went in, and it's same old, same old. Everybody needs a drink. Everybody needs something to eat. You know, usual stuff. I, I, I feel like I spend an hour um, buttering things. Um, so that was that. And then we uh, needed to get various bits. Um, for me, in a supermarket, I'm like, well, uh, what, what's this supermarket's own brand energy drink like? Um, so I was like, on, I was on the hunt or the lookout for, uh, for their own version of their energy drinks um due to uh having bought some um pre i don't know what don't know what you call them like a little protein shake i'd bought these protein shakes from asda and i'd opened one and i took a mouthful um, and that didn't go great um so I was like, oh, maybe it was just the first mouthful. And I had another, I had another mouthful, uh, and the second mouthful went in the sink along with the first, uh, and I poured out that protein shake, um, and thought I, I felt great that I hadn't bought six of these things, and they were all full of lumps. Um, so I was like, I'm on the hunt for energy drinks and protein shakes. And like, you know, like those old days of hunting for that comic, I was like some kind of bloodhound. I was like, oh, oh, take me to your energy drinks. Take me to your protein shakes. Um, to my knowledge, Morrison's don't do an own brand energy drink. Um, which is fine, plenty of other places do, um, as to do, and, uh, and our, our firm favourite, Mr. Tesco, he does the finest energy drink, and believe you me, when I saw that those four packs had come down 50p, whew, I bought an extra pack for good luck. Um, so yeah, Mr. Morrison, he does not do an own brand energy drink. I feel there's a hole in the market there, Mr. Morrison, but you know, who am I to judge? However, I was in a situation where I was like, oh, I'm going to get one of these uh, these protein shakes because I was, I was definitely needing a protein shake. And I was like, well, look, this protein shake here is two quid. It was in like the sandwich section. So I, but it's saying like a meal deal's like three quid. So why don't I just get like, to me in my head it was cheaper to get a meal deal for three pounds than to buy a protein shake for two. Um, so I got like the protein shake, I got like a bag of popcorn, um, uh, a wrap that was like, was that? I think it was hummus and falafel, it's like I can have that for my lunch. Um, yeah. I wandered off down the supermarket carrying my soon-to-be purchases. <clears throat> everybody was off getting the bits and pieces that everybody needed. Ended up in like the uh, like the juice and the milk section. I'm like, whoa, hold on, what is this? 
This is an extensive collection of protein shakes. These are what it would appear to be Morrison's own brand of protein shakes. And there are a multitude of different ones. And they're all different prices. And it would appear that I can get a better deal than the meal deal. So I'm looking and there's like a little one. And it's like buy two for £2.50. I'm like that's a good deal. Two for £2.50. Good deal. Then next, move move along one. Uh, there's like, like a big one. Like big one, two pounds. It's like, well, that's like, that's giant compared to the the one I'm holding. All these other two guys, and that's two quid. And a lot more protein shake there for your money. Move down again. There was an offer, like two of these big guys for three quid or something. I was like, well, that's that's the same price as the meal deal. It's twice as much protein shake. Move down again. What is this? It's the big it's the big size. It's the same Morrison's own brand. Special offer. One pound. I'm like, well, colour me whatever. That that's it. I was like, I'm putting the meal deal back and I'm getting three of these. Three for a pound. They were giant can't think what sort of size to tell you um but i'm like i am all over this action uh went all the way to put the meal deal back the meal deal back walked all the way back to the uh to the tills uh put my protein shakes through the tills obviously two quid all right well that's not what they said on the shelf so then we had to get the girl at the till to reduce them, and apparently that required other people, and so on and so forth. The point I'm getting at is, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a sucker for the, for the hunt for the energy drink, uh, and the protein shake. Um, I don't know what the deal was. They, they were definitely showing as being on offer, for a pound. Um. And yeah, I had to take a little trip to uh, to Tesco's last night to get my weekly supply of energy drinks. Um, and yeah, it's like Morrison seem to have the uh, they need to sort out their pricing, but they they seem to have the uh, the protein shake covered. Um, I was saying earlier today, I really should just go back to using the the powder. Um, and, and mix in a protein shake uh, I've got a big tub that I had from the last time I was big into protein shakes um, but like I say it was from last time so I think there's a possibility it's out of date uh, which I'm not overly sure that it's a good idea to have out of date protein shake when protein shakes are quite notorious for having uh, let's say a mixture of gastric effects and maybe leave it at that maybe yeah uh so yeah i don't know i don't know if that's like a, an age thing uh or the collector in me uh but yeah i go hunting uh in in supermarkets and shops for deals on energy drinks and protein shakes so that's where my life's at you know gone are the days of uh hard hard liquor and hard drugs it's uh oof energy drinks and protein shakes for this guy woo Oh, that's why I'm so ill all the time. Maybe I should, uh, yeah, I don't know. So, as I was saying before, I couldn't talk about the weekend with uh, with old Luke because uh, I had stuff to talk about with you guys. Can't uh, can't boil me carrots twice, as they say. Nobody says that. Um, so. Something that happened on Saturday. 
um, Storm Sakara, is it? Um, wasn't due to kick off until late Saturday, uh, going into Sunday. Sunday was like a danger of death warning, or whatever it was. Uh, basically, don't leave your house, uh, don't do anything. So I was like, right, we're probably going to stay in on Sunday, so get all your toys ready, because uh, it's going to be full-blown playing inside day. Um, but Saturday, um, it was like glorious sunshine, um, so, Saturday morning, sort of like taken up with, um, activities, uh, you know, going to Morrison's and finding energy drinks, protein shakes, um, so, you know, get back, do lunch, um, go through all that sort of stuff, um, and then out the other side of that, it, you you run a bit of a, you've only got two or three hours before you need to start making some sort of tea getting people to bed and stuff so it's a it's a delicate sort of thing especially in a situation where it's you're going to be locked in the house tomorrow so you know that often leads to uh oh can we go in the garden absolutely you can go in the garden what are you going to do in the garden i'm going to take the hula hoop and the um tennis ball with the mittens and, and take this and take that and take the other and, and, and we're going to take take that it's like that's a lot of stuff and you've got a couple of hours okay well i'll just take these right okay go 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 in the garden cool can we go to the park? Yeah, you can go to the park. Cool. It's like, well, you know, that storm's going to kick off. Um, and although it's glorious sunshine, it's kind of windy. It's like, didn't you get a kite for your birthday? Oh, yeah, let's get the kite. Okay, get the kite. So, we wandered out. The... Uh, field where the park is it was like ooh, super boggy mind where you're putting your feet um so in the end like we go went through all this stuff time ticks away while you're trying to decide what's happening and it's like well i thought you were gonna you know well let's go do this go do this i thought you were gonna take the kite all right let's take the kite or get the kite get the kite i'm like well the kite will need building absolutely not it, it was built in the bag it's like Okay, uh, I think it needed an elastic band taken off it. So we go out. I'm like, do you know how to fly a kite? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I've got a kite. I know how to fly a kite. Cool. Uh, let's go fly this kite then. Um, turned out wasn't strictly true that uh, the knowledge of kite flying was uh, was a thing. So I'm like, right, well. Don't do this and don't do that and don't do the other. Don't run towards the kite with 30 feet of string let out because you're going to get tangled. So that was five minutes of undoing that. Don't run towards the trees because if the kite goes in the tree, that's the kite done. Um, go over here, stand here. I'll hold it like this. No. So, you know, a few um, teething troubles, a few hiccups here and there, a few, you know, nothing major. It's just, you know, people need to learn how to fly a kite. So, got the kite up in the air, got it flying. Oh, a super good day for flying a kite. It was like windy, um, fairly consistent wind up and down a little bit, but definitely a good kite flying day. And yet again, it was one of those scenarios where I was looking around and it's like, there's me, there's the girls, there was like two other girls over in the park and that was it, the place was empty. Um, and then those the, the, the other girls disappeared 
not long after we got there. So it was just us flying a kite. And all I could think was, in this day and age of mobile phones, tablets, computer games, Fortnite, fuck's sake, all of that, all, all of those things, Netflix, you know, every component that is designed to keep your children indoors, away from people, you know, a lot of, you know, there's this theory that all of these things are designed to keep your children safe. Um, some of them fail miserably uh, in doing that and actually do the opposite. Some of them work quite well. Um, but you cannot tell me that there is anything better on all of these things than flying a kite. I, I used to have a kite when I was little. And I had it for ages and I loved it and I enjoyed it. To the point that it got quite good with flying a kite. And uh, at a point in time got got a better kite. Got a good kite. Um, with with two handles and two bits of string. And you know you got to move it in, in certain directions. And you know the, the phrase fly a kite. Um, is the That's the difference between. Just standing there and going, oh, the kite's in the air. I'm, I'm winning. And actually, you know, doing manoeuvres and things. You know, if you if you practice with them, you can get them to do stuff and all this. And you know, my my daughter was able to fly the kite, get the kite up. I was like, oh, you know, if the wind does this, do that, and you know, walk walk the other way, walk away from it, and and let right lets them out, and oh, the wind's drawing, and do this and. And going through all these things, like, oh, you got to try and preempt it and remembering what it was like to fly a kite, you know, in the days of, oh, you know, take, take the football and go to the park and all this. And, and they thoroughly enjoyed it, thoroughly enjoyed it. And I enjoyed it. And it's like, you can recreate these things. With all of this technology. You can't recreate that level of fun. You know. A group of people can have like that. And we were the only people there. And yeah. You know. A storm was about to break. Um, but it was hours away. And you know. We, uh, we went in the park. And they went on literally everything in the park. And we came out and we had some tea. Um, so yeah, any, any parents that are listening, um, kites aren't, uh, you know, they're not expensive things. Um, without looking, I will say that kite cost me less than a tenner. Um, I, you know, might've been seven or eight quid or something. Might've been more, I don't know. But... For the amount of fun, for the bonding, um, for, you know, doing it together and, you know, because the other thing is flying a kite's a minimum of a two-man job. We had like a, a three-man system going. Um, so you have, to, you have to work together like a team and, you know, for families, that's great. And it was just... Another example of a really nice time and a really nice experience that didn't involve technology. Um, and there's something about my children that, um, that, I, that I do like. They will happily sit down and, and watch something on the TV. You put the TV on, they're there. They will happily sit down um, with the Kindle, read a book. Um certain toys that are technology based yeah but they will also do stuff that doesn't involve technology um like say you know my daughter wanted to take uh, take a hula hoop because she loves a hula hoop um so uh, stuff like that's just it's just nice just nice Obviously, I've got a tickle in the throat. 
Um, so I've been, I mean, I got like chewing through podcasts the last uh, the last week or so. As as I always talk about, you know, you 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 get a podcast backlog all the time. Um, you know, they never stop coming. Um, and I've got podcasts that are, that are two a week. You know, a lot of podcasts are monthly or um, weekly or or whatever. Um, you look at like this podcast. This is the second one of the week, but I'm pretty sure I'm doing one tomorrow. Um, there was mention of doing one on Friday and mention of doing one on Saturday. Um, obviously, that's not a reflection of the release schedule, but you know that's a lot of recording. Some of those will will get released this week. Um, the one I recorded yesterday I will get released a week yesterday, so a week on Monday, um, that sort of stuff. Um, so there's a lot of recording, a lot of releasing, um, but like I say, I've been absolutely chewing through podcasts. Um, my work situation is come in, log on, earphones in, podcast on, and go. And I just work. I work and work and work, and then I go home. Um, it's very busy at the moment. So, getting through a lot of podcasts. Um, you guys know I like to get my Bill Burr up to date, which I've done. Um, we've, I've listened to all of the Joe Rogans that I had that were outstanding. Uh, Matt Maron. Da, 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 da. So then I'm like, right, well, what, what have I got the most of? Turned out when I did a, a quick recce, the one I had the most of was Two Bears, One Cave. Um, man, I freaking love that podcast. I was sat at work yesterday listening to a Two Bears, One Cave crying. And this is no word of a lie. Crying with laughter. Sat at my desk. I then sent Luke a message saying I'm currently at my desk crying <coughs> with laughter. He was like, I bet that doesn't look strange at all. I was like, I know, I know, I've, I've done podcasts on it. Came home, relayed to Leanne the bit that I'd been crying about. Then spent five minutes trying to track it down and actually found the bit in question played the bit to her she was laughing at it um it was it's so funny excuse me for a second <laughs> sorry it's so funny that podcast um you know two of my favorite comedians uh and it was, you know, Bert was talking about something from when one of his children was younger, and I. He sometimes have that thing when a comedian or another person talks about something you know, so well, um, or you can certainly put yourself in the in the position they're talking about, so it makes it so much funnier. It was that I was crying. However, for everything good I've just said about it, I am going to say something that's a little negative. And I don't want to be a negative Nancy. Um, by now, I imagine you are aware of my hatred um, of adverts. I hate adverts more I hate pretty much anything. Um... I work on the principle that you can't sell me something. It's impossible to sell me something because I am a consumer. If I want something, I will get it. Um, 
barring like something that's you know ridiculously expensive if there is something out there in the world that i want i will get it that's that's who i am that's how i am if i want it i'll get it so because of that advertisements have no place in my world because you can't sell something to me if i want it i'm gonna get it before you're gonna get an advert to me so your advert is just a waste of my time. I, f I can't watch um, actual television because of adverts. I gave up watching TV because of adverts. I couldn't do it anymore. I hate them with a passion. Um, as far as podcasts are concerned, a lot of podcasts have adverts. And I work... On the principle that although I hate podcasts with a uh, podcast, I hate adverts with a passion, I love podcasts and podcasts are free. So somebody has to pay for it. So if that is that, um, you know, Bill Burr will do a lot of reads for adverts. Um, Kevin Smith does adverts um, Joe Rogan Mike Maron Harmontown pretty much any half decent podcast will have adverts and you know um, a Joe Rogan podcast I'll skip the first 10 minutes I press fast forward you know, the jump button, until I hear the music. And then when I hear the music, I let it play, because I know all the adverts are done. Mark Maron, exactly the same. I skip it through until I hear the music, then I let it play, because I know the adverts are done. <coughs> Those are fine. Bill Burr does it slightly different. He will do so much of the podcast, then the adverts, then the rest of the podcast. So it's a little trickier to gauge. However, Bill Burr has his reading voice. So if you skip through and it jumps to a bit and it's like, no, nope, he's still reading, you can skip through again. Two Bears, One Cave. A relatively new podcast. I think it's had 18 episodes at this point in time. That's not a lot in the podcast world. They do so many adverts. I've noticed that the time of the podcast has dropped. So it's uh, it's more like a 90 minute podcast now. This is no joke. Only an hour of that 90 minutes is podcast. The rest is adverts. So the podcast starts with 5 to 10 minutes of adverts there will be another point just randomly in the middle where they do adverts and then there is another point that they will do adverts of a 90 minute podcast half an hour of it is adverts I love the podcast. I love the fact that it's free. And like I say, I get that, you know, somebody has to pay for that. But wow. Listening to like a few of these podcasts back to back. Jesus. There's a lot of adverts. And they're long adverts as well. Oof. But like I say. I guess you got to pay. You've got to pay. Right, let's talk about some uh, some entertainment. Let's talk about the entertainment. TV wise, um, the other day in the gym, I finished uh, Evangelion for the bajillionth time. Um, it's been an interesting experience. It's been an enjoyable experience. Um, it 
as I said a little while ago, it could possibly be the first time I've actually watched it with the subtitles. Um, you know, back in the uh, back in the days of watching it on VHS, there wasn't an option for a different uh, language track. Um, fantastic series. Interestingly. Uh, you know, at this point in time, I've seen the series, I've seen the end of Evangelion, I've seen, um, you know, all of those those movies that were released at that time, and I've seen the uh, the remake movies one, two, and three. Um, amazing to think that by the end of the series, it it's. It's just it just ends. It's just the end. Um, I can see why people were not happy and required an ending. Um, you know, what they got was probably not what they were asking for. But hey, that's a whole other kettle of fish. Um, great series, great animation. Um, just. Yeah, there's 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 episodes at the back end where I always say, you know, where they ran out of money to make the series and some of the bits of the episodes are basically drawn on a napkin. It's just funny and tragic all at the same time. Great series. Um I thoroughly enjoyed it watching it this time. Um I'm gonna do the end of Evangelion. But, something you might be pleased to hear, is I've finally convinced Sam for us doing a watch-along. And that watch-along, ladies and germs, is supposedly going to be the end of Evangelion. Um, that's supposed to be this week, so stay tuned. Obviously, the way things work is... You will have seen that podcast before you'll hear this. So, yeah. Um, you know, check it out if that's if that's been released by now. It should have been. Um, and it actually happens. But anyway. Evangelion, fantastic. Thoroughly enjoyable. Um, at some point, I'd started watching uh, Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood again. So, um, in my <coughs> desperate need to watch something while I was on the treadmill and needed something quickly, I've put that back on. Uh, I do feel I need something else. It's basically like a, a tour of uh, the, uh, the animes that inspired my tattoos. Um... So yeah, that was uh, that was finishing Evangelion for the bajillionth time. Um, speaking of finishing things, who, 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 I watched the last episodes of BoJack Horseman. Um, so I watched the first of the new episodes. Which are the last episodes that they were doing. Um, I'm not going to spoil anything. But I am going to say some things. So it might get a little cryptic. Um, <clears throat> the first episode I watched. I was like. Oh this isn't this isn't good. Um, I had issues with the. You know, they, they basically split the last series in two. Um, and the, the other stuff. I've spoken about it before. I wasn't the biggest fan. Uh, I felt it didn't really do the series justice. Um, having seen the last episodes now, I realise that, that although it wasn't the best content, it was there for a reason to serve a bigger purpose. Um, I binged the back of the, I, that's the way I've done Bojack Horseman up to now I start watching I'll, you know, I'll just put an episode on I'll just watch an episode quickly and then I just have to watch it all I have to see it um, the way I thought it was going to end is the way that it did end 
um, I shed a tear um, and then somewhat unfortunately there was another episode and that annoyed me so I was like don't do this leave it as it is yeah people will be annoyed but let's let's leave it there let's do the right the right ending let's do the right ending but of course they couldn't do that there's there's no way that was going to happen so um instead they did what i would call a hollywood ending um It was okay for what it was. It, it wasn't the way I wanted it to end. Uh, which, you know... Am I, am, I, am I the first person to say that? About a long-running TV series? I think I might be. I, I know. I get it. What I'm saying is... You know... Don't make me roll a tear and then take that tear away. Um, I'm not going to spoil it, like I say. Um, Bojack Horseman is fantastic from start to finish. It's wonderful. And that is largely to do with the fact that it is hands down the darkest TV show I have ever seen. It's so dark. It, the world it's set in is obviously designed to take to take the sharp edges off. Because if you've got a world where you've got like these humanoid animals, then it makes it slightly more comical anyway. Um but that, I don't know if that makes it worse. It's so dark. So dark. Um, yeah. Fantastic. I will, ha I will heartily recommend that program to anyone. So good. So good. Uh, it's finished now. So if like me, you, you, you know, you want to put an episode on and then you're a, you're a, you're an easy binger. You will end up binging the whole thing if you start this. Uh, it is wonderful. Um, I'd like you know I'd like to say I'd like to see more stuff like this, uh, but I don't think there'll ever ever be anything like it because of you know it is a it is a one of its kind sort of thing. Um, just brilliant. So yeah, that's Bojack Horseman. So, I watched a movie. That is correct, ladies and gents. I watched a film. That film was a film that Amazon were like, nah, sorry mate, we can't, we can't send you that because we haven't got it. It's like, cool, that's that, that's great. HMV were like, yeah, we we can't give you it either because we haven't got it. It's like, cool, that's brilliant. Um, and then one evening, I was uh, I was checking my bank account and I was like, whoa, why are Amazon taking money out of my bank? And I checked my uh, email later on. It was like, oh, we've sent you that film that we said we couldn't get. Like, cool, cheers. Turned up the next day. I was very excited. Um, and I think I watched it that night. I was really unwell. Surprise, surprise. Bet you're shocked to hear it, aren't you? Uh, but yeah, it was a little poorly. Uh, so I was like, I'm going to watch a movie. And that movie, ladies and gentlemen, Jane Silent Bob Reboot. Now, I'm fully aware that there is a percentage of people that just tuned out. Um, so be it. It is what it is. I'm a fan. Um, I'm a, a Kevin Smith fan. That's not always been the case. Uh, used to be a huge Kevin Smith fan. Uh, and then I really went off him for quite some time. Um, 
And then I, I came back into the fold a few years back um, and I've been enjoying his stuff ever since. Um, so it's classed as a sequel to Jane and Silent Bob Strikes Back uh, where it's exactly the same principle. Uh, Hollywood are making a movie about Jane and Silent Bob and they go to stop it. Um, this time around, Hollywood are rebooting that movie and they go to stop the reboot. It is <clears throat> absolutely jam-freaking-packed with cameos. Uh, a lot of in-jokes. Um, a lot of people that you're just like, oh, I recognise that person. <coughs> it was very enjoyable. I genuinely laughed out loud and I was sat on my own, which I often say, if you can laugh, out loud on your own it must be funny um, and the way I described it to a couple of people who were a bit oh, I was like yeah but I laughed and I laughed out loud what was the last film you saw that you can genuinely say you laughed out loud and uh, they were like oh yeah don't know like, yeah exactly so I enjoyed it um, I've actually been putting off the urge to watch it again. Um, I near, <laughs> I, at one point I was enjoying it that much that I was like, oh, it's early. When this finishes, I might watch it again. Um, it was not all rosy. Uh, the third act, I was a bit like, what, what, why are we doing this? Um, I felt that there was a large section of the third act that was was really unnecessary. Uh, it really lost me, did that bit. Um, but definitely a, a film for, for my time of life. Um, obviously it's got this uh, parental element, uh, this father element. Uh, which obviously really speaks to me uh, now, at this point in my life. Thoroughly enjoyable. Uh, like I say, third act lost me a little bit, but was still good and was still watchable and was still enjoyable. <coughs> Had uh, some of the best cameos at the back end. I'm not going to spoil that if you, uh, if you are in intending to watch it. I am going to watch it again some point soon. Um... So I'm looking forward to that. Um, so yeah, I actually watched a film and it was a good film. I enjoyed it. Um, yeah, obviously it's a film I've been hearing about forever. You know, because obviously it's been Kevin Smith's huge fight. It's still a focus now. He's still touring it. Um, <coughs> so listening to the podcast that I do, I've heard a lot about it. When me and Mike went to see uh, Hollywood Babylon live, we saw a clip of it. Uh, that was cool. So yeah, it's been a long time coming to sit to see, and uh, it was it was thoroughly enjoyable. I enjoyed it. And like with everything, it's really hard to review something that's good. Um, so how are we getting on with this list? Talk computer games. Woo! Computer games. Trying to, uh, yeah, trying to do something about computer games at the moment. So, last we spoke, was I playing Control? Because it's on my list. Um, so, I was playing Control, and uh, I ended up with uh, two missions left. One was um, to go and deal with some mould. That's right, mould. And the other was the uh, was the famous mission I couldn't get past. I have levelled up and upgraded and so on and so forth. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to give that level I can't do a try. And do you know what, people? That's right. Still can't fucking do it. Uh, so I went, I went and did the mould instead. Um, 
did all the bits that I needed to. And it was like, right, go down, all the way down, 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 go down, down, all the way down to the bottom and find the source and the mould. I was like, I can do that. Went on a journey of about a million miles and I got there and there was an unkillable monster that uh, that killed me. I was like, yeah, I will never be able to beat that monster. Right, okay, so my choices are unkillable monster or level I can't do. Cool, well this game can go fuck itself. There was a time where I felt bad putting control into my category of worst game of the year. Uh, now I am glad I gave it that title. Um, you you people know you people? You mean you people? <coughs> you guys know that I loved that game and that game made me hate it. And every time I mention it to Sam, I have to listen to Sam talk about how it really isn't that difficult. It's not that hard at all. It's really not that hard. I really don't understand what your problem is. And that makes me even angrier with that game. Uh, maybe maybe you're just rubbish at playing games. Well, yes, Sam, I am. That's no secret to anyone. Do you know who it is a secret to? The people that made Control. Because do you know what they did? They went, oh, you don't need a difficulty setting for this game that's really difficult. Uh, you'll, you'll either have to uh, be good at games or uh, never finish Control. Did you know that? Because that, that's how it is. Dickhead. So, uh, yeah, Control can officially go fuck itself. Um, so I'm like, right, what games have I got access to? I'm like, you know something, I should really go and give Days Gone another try. I was like, but I wasn't enjoying that game. It's got horrible mechanics that I don't like. I don't like survival games. I've, I've been able to admit that. Um, <coughs> but it was uh, it was looking a bit bleak, so I was like, Do you know what? I might have been a little unfair today. He's gone, so let's give it another try. So that was X number of days ago. Could even be a week ago. I'm happy to report I'm still playing Days Gone. Um, I don't hate survival games any less than I did and I don't hate the mechanic of oh the motorbike can take damage uh, but you can repair it uh, but it's also a magnet for damage I don't hate that any less um, but giving it a bit more of a chance a bit more of an open mind put a bit more time and effort into it and uh, I have I have progressed further in that game. As you guys know, I do not review a game I am playing with this is good or this is bad. Because all too many times before, cough, cough, control you motherfucker, um, games will turn on you. What I will say is that I believe I have gone into like a new section and having watched a video on the internet recently it said that when you go on to a new section that really opens up the game uh, and the back end of the game is the better part of the game i don't know if that's the section i've gone into uh, what i do know is it's opened up a lot more of the clear out this nest type missions so i've got a lot of that to do um didn't play any last night it was literally podcast gym home bed um i oh know that's not true i completely overlooked it. i'm watching um it's always sunny in philadelphia i'd started that series then bojack came along um so when i got in last night i just basically i was like i'll watch it's always sunny and then i'll go to bed so no game that's it's one of those games i was like oh i've got half an hour it's not worth putting days gone on for half an hour 
because uh, you don't really get you wouldn't really get into it enough uh, you need a, a minimum of an hour um, so yeah <coughs> that is the game I'm playing at the moment um, I've, I've got to the point where I think I have to I'm gonna have to deal with like a horde but the this is this thing that this game is notorious for these uh, these giant hordes of zombies um, and every video I've seen the person has a particular type of gun and I don't have that type of gun so I'm like I'm not dealing I'm not going to try and deal with a horde until I have the gun I keep seeing in all these videos so that might be a while away I don't know I've just unlocked a new tier of weapons so I've been able to get like a machine gun and stuff like that but not the machine gun from the videos so I need to do that um, VR wise uh, I've mentioned this before um, when you're sick sickness and VR do not go together uh, even with like uh, like this monster cold whatever the hell this thing is um, it's just not VR playing good talk about the grammar on that um, I was trying to avoid saying a word that annoys me uh, it's not if you are not well VR is not the thing you should be doing with your time um, just uh, unfortunately that's just the way it is I did have a tiny 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 little go on VR the other day um, my eldest likes to play VR uh, my middle daughter was like I want to play VR it's like, you won't be able to do this. I want to play VR. Okay, let's get you playing some VR. Um, I I love when my children share my interests. You know, like baking. Let's bake a cake. Okay, where is everyone? Guess I'm baking this cake on my own then. Anyway. Um, but as it was... Um, the the game that that my daughter likes to play, it was doing something. It, it we I couldn't get it to center where I wanted it. It wanted to center off to the left, but that would have meant she would have had to have been like stood inside the dining table to play. So I was like, I don't understand what it's doing, uh, and because she couldn't play that, she didn't want to play anything. So I was like, okay, I'm gonna have a little go on the new level that has been released for Pistol Whip. So I had a go on that. But yeah, <coughs> VR and sickness don't go together. Uh, I'm desperate to get back to playing some VR. I'm so desperate because I've got so much stuff that I want to play. Um, so yeah, I need to get well soon. I need to send myself a get well soon card and do it. Uh, so yeah, that's that. That's that. That that that. Um, that is the end, and the end brings with it the usual, which is going to the gym. I am still going to the gym. Um, I went to the gym last night. Did not. I could have gone on Sunday. I didn't. I took the executive decision to instead of going to the gym, to stay at home. And to use the gym time to go to bed. I was like, get get an early night, get rested up, make yourself better. So that you can, you know, go to the gym more sort of thing. Get well. Um, I went to the gym last night. Um, I increased the weight on... One, two, three, four different exercises... Um, increasing the weight is a bit of a double edged sword for some stuff it's fine and it's great you just you just have to sort of grit your teeth and get through it for other stuff obviously it can be a little dangerous um, so you just got to you know you got to be careful with it uh, but I did it I got through it um, I'm going to go this evening as long as I don't take a turn for the worst um and then I'll have rest day tomorrow. Um, I don't want to say 
too much about this subject at the moment. I will tell you more about what I'm talking about now, further down the line, because I'm trying to do something. But, <coughs> <coughs> what I will say is this. Something that I've been trying has shown to have the desired effect. And maybe, fingers crossed, maybe in a week's time, I might be able to tell you what that means. I'm hoping so. Um, but for now, I just want to keep that a little bit under wraps because I haven't mentioned that to anyone. Um, so yeah, the gym is going fine. Um, I've missed the odd day due to sickness, but I'm still... You know, I'm still getting back on the horse every time I don't go. I get back on the horse and I do go. So I feel like I'm, you know, touch touch wood. I feel like I'm sort of back in the groove, which feels good. You know, it's not a, it's not a chore. It's not a grind. It's not that. It's just, it's just a thing. It's uh, just have to get it done, move on. So yeah, that's cool. Sorry. You know something? I could have ended the podcast. I waited two minutes to blow my nose. And then you guys wouldn't have had to put up with this. And I could tell you. You know, this is the point where I go, oh, I'll just edit it out. But you and I both know that's a lie. So there, I won't lie to you like I have done in the past. That's the podcast, ladies and gentlemen. Um, thank you, as always, for tuning in. Thank you for sticking with me. Um, tell you what, why don't you give me a shout if you um, if there's something on the podcast you don't like listening to, let me know. If there's something on the podcast you'd like to hear more of, let me know. Um, if you want to come on the podcast, let me know. Um, yeah, all of that stuff. There we go. Until next week, I'm going to say bye. Uh, and I will, uh, I will talk to you then. Bye. There we go. What do you think of that? Another one done, another week gone. Yeah. YouTube watchers, make sure you're subscribing, liking, sharing, comments, all the good stuff that you can do with the YouTubes. Everybody jump over to thecookiecast.com, check us out over there, send us some love. So that's it for this week, until next week I'm going to say bye, and I'll see you then. Bye.